you know, no matter what your circumstance is, if you ask the right questions, if you ask what is it showing me, what am I learning from it, what is it about, then that's an instant shift from being a victim into being an empowered being. So today I'm with my lovely new friend, Saha. Now we've crossed paths because she's in the well-being space as well. So I'm really uh, particular about who I interview. Saha's already hooked me up with a few people to interview on the show, which is great. Um, but Saha told me something recently, which I, I actually didn't know enough of. And she said that you are one of the top 100 psychics in the world, nominated three times. That's right. When she said that, I was like, so we have to, <laughs> we have to interview you more. You're known as an intuitive mentor. That's right. And you have a program that you've created called um, Unbox. Unbox the Real You. Yeah. And I read that you've also done over a thousand healings on people. Yeah. Before we start, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for having me on Soul Magazine. I really love your work. I love that you dedicate your time to keep the magazine going and you keep looking for people. Um, you're very passionate about it and it's really obvious. And I just wanted to say I really salute that. I want to thank you because I almost harassed her to have me on the show. And she's like, well, what's the angle? What's the angle? And I suddenly realized that as a mentor, as a life coach, I think I'm the only one who was or used to be professionally intuitive. What I mean by that is this was what paid the mortgage. Um, the reason that led me to it was a huge overnight transformation. My life really changed 180 degrees overnight with the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. So my life really changed 180 degrees overnight. And that happened on the 2nd of August, 1990. And it was such a traumatic, horrific time, totally unpredictable, and um, that you just felt lost, you know, like the whole landscape had changed, your life had changed overnight. And that kind of left me really um, gobsmacked as to what is life about, what is, you know, who knows the future, um, how do you plan for your future, or how do you make it happen? And it led me into exploring the future, how can you predict it, and I've learned that nothing is really predestined, that we cannot control our future. All we can do is prepare ourselves for the best, become the best versions of ourselves, and learn about how do we make things real. Um, if you align your intention, if you align your mind, if you align you know, your thoughts, your emotions towards that goal, you will get there. I mean, it sounds easy and it really is, but committing to the process is what sometimes is difficult for some people. So I started exploring, I did a lot of different modalities. I did the Silver Method course, which is really how to use your mind to make things happen. It's, it's totally non-new agey. It's really to do with getting your brain into a certain uh, wavelength or a certain vibe. And you know, one thing led into, into another. And I find that I was actually coaching, mentoring, rather than giving readings. So a few years ago, I've stopped completely because my clients dropped the need. They, they no longer needed to know the future in that way. They needed to learn how to make it happen. And all of that led into being able to help someone to cut through the chase, to literally unbox, to come out of the limitation, to fulfill their potential, no matter what situation they find themselves in. If you are so focused on here, the need, the connection with that previous, whatever, traumatic event will dissolve. Of course, we can work on how to replace, if you will, how to create new neural paths by saying affirmation or whatever it is. But mainly my thing is to help people move forward um, quickly. So let's say, for example, if I came to you, when, as an intuitive mentor, do you intuitively read first any, anything that's going on? What would you I say? listen to you first. You ask yeah. the questions? Yeah. And then... yeah, there's an assessment process that they go through. Yeah. I ask questions and I listen to you. And you know, sound is a vibration. So no matter what you're saying, the real um, energy. energy, the real vibration of what you're saying comes out. So you're saying so, somebody could be saying, oh, you know, I'm really positive, but underneath yeah. you can feel the negativity. Yeah. yeah, I had a friend and every time you met her, she'd say, I'm happy, I'm really happy. And I thought, oh my God, she's not, oh. you know? <laughs> so I listen because you can only sound your truth and that authentic voice hits the heart if it's saying the truth. If it isn't, I would feel it. 
but it's not therapy. It's really if you feel unstuck, confused, if you lack motivation, if you don't know what the next platform is. You see, a lot of times we go through a transition and we're not aware. There's a huge difference between a transition and a change. It could be transitioning from being married to being widowed, for example, something I went through recently. Yeah. It could be transitioning from being a daughter to not being a daughter, losing a loved one, you know? So so you, you just touched upon the fact that your husband passed away recently. With all the all the skills that you've had, how did you cope with that? And did you use a lot of the skills that you've learned over the past 20 odd years? I think to be a really good successful therapist, you have to walk your talk, so yes. Um, a lot of people said, why don't you ask for help? Because I wanted to show myself maybe that I can walk through this and come out the other end and be okay. Um, otherwise, how can I work with any degree of integrity? You know, no matter what your circumstance is, if you ask the right questions, if you ask, what is it showing me? What am I learning from it? What is it about? Then that's an instant shift from being a victim into being an empowered being. Okay, this is showing me that I need to adapt, that I need to adjust. And the whole thing of resilience is not to get stuck. Well, I mean, when you're talking about what is this showing me, I mean, I'm a great believer as I've got older with all the things that I have experienced, not a war, but loss and everything. Um, that you don't have control of your life. And sometimes I think some things are predestined because your soul has chosen to go through these experiences. And it is a, a soul's journey in many ways, I feel. May I interrupt you? Sure. What if someone doesn't feel or believe that there's a soul or a different purpose? You see, my job is really difficult because I had to learn how to communicate with each client according to their whatever you know beliefs um, so far. So if I talk to you about the soul and you don't believe in the soul or you don't want to talk about it, then immediately you're going to dismiss anything I say. So the one thing that I've noticed with a lot of people I'm interviewing is we're talking about there is a spiritual shift going on in the world. And um, I've been through it and I, I'm, I, I love meeting people because I know a lot of them who are in the space of well-being, yes. they know what's going on. So yes. I feel like, like, for example, with soul travel, I came from doing an entertainment travel show and suddenly the soul traveler name was given to me. I didn't know what it was going to yeah, be about. you were about. inspired with it. Yeah. yeah, so I felt this platform was to help people who don't know what's going on yet, that there is a level of consciousness that is rising Absolutely. on this planet. Tell me a little bit about that with the people that have come to you. Have you seen that a lot? Because there's a lot of it in Dubai. I see it and I have seen it in a slightly different way. I've seen it through the evolution um, of or the progress that the clients have made. They simply become more open. They simply desire more. They are simply more aligned, um, more intentional. All of these things are symptoms of a spiritual evolution or evolving. Okay, well, it was it was lovely to meet you. Um, I you. think I could speak for another two hours, actually, but I don't think I've got enough. Thank time. you so much. Thank you for Thank this you opportunity. So and um, it's so wonderful to be with you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you, indeed. Sir. Thank you.